Welcome back to another video. In this one, I've got an idea for a multi-function jointing sled to use in my planer as well as at the table saw. I've got a project coming up with some really long boards and I want to be able to clean up the face of them. They're wider than my jointer can handle. I only have a six inch jointer. So I'm gonna use this sled and my planer and get them nice and flat. The idea came from these micro jig match fit clamps. They sent me these to try out and I've got some ideas of how to use them. The basic concept is you use this special dovetail bit in a router that they have, route some grooves, and then these actually hold inside the dovetail groove that you established. So let's get going, let's build this thing. To start off, I'm laying out some of this rigid foam insulation that I like to use with my track saw. And then I'm just cutting a full length strip out of a new sheet of plywood that I'm going to use for this sled. To make sure that both sides of the piece that I cut out were parallel, I just bumped the fence slightly and ran it through one more time on my table saw. You can use a regular dovetail bit and that will work just fine for this system. Microjig does have their own dovetail bit and it features a roundover at the top and I'll show you a little bit more about that later. They also recommend to pre-cut all of your grooves with a quarter inch bit this just helps remove some of the bulk of the material and makes the dovetail bit not work so hard. As far as the spacing for these grooves, I didn't have a really set method I was going by. I just tried to eyeball where I thought I would most likely use the grooves and put some marks there and went with it. At this time, I do not have a router table, so I don't have a good way to set a fence and make a bunch of cuts all with the same distance from the fence. So I'm having to do this in a couple of different passes. I started out with my trim router with the quarter inch bit to make the relief cuts. I would just clamp down a straight edge and make each of the cuts and then later I'll come back with the larger router and the actual dovetail bit. All right, I've got the preliminary grooves cut and I did that with a quarter inch bit. This was just to make the dovetail bit not want to wander and not work as hard. So I cut that in. Uh, the same depth as the other one will go, but just using a quarter inch bit. Uh, it went pretty well. I kind of did each of those as I set up the straight edge, just like you saw. Now I'm gonna go back and just try to line up the other bit as best I can and cut in the dovetail slots. The reason this worked is the final dovetail bit was slightly wider than the quarter inch bit I used to remove the bulk of the material. So as long as I was lining up my straight edge to be 90 degrees to the edge, I could just sight in where I needed to make the cut and it would be just fine. I wanted to show you really quickly how nice and clean this edge is. Uh, there's a slight round over at the top of that bit from Microjig, and they say that it leaves a nice clean cut, and it does. Uh, this had fuzzies all over it from the other bit that I used, and that bit cleaned it right up. I've done no sanding. I grabbed a piece of half inch plywood that I had on hand and ripped off a strip. I'm gonna cut these into smaller pieces and use them as hold downs and stops later. I found when putting a couple of pieces together like this, it's helpful to use a slight countersink on the underside of the top piece and the top side of the under piece. It just helps the two pieces seat together much more nicely. And as far as the placement of these stops, again, I don't really have a rhyme or reason. I was just trying to think about some different sized boards that I would use and I went ahead and pre-drilled all of those. With a sled this length, what I worry about is it's got a little bit of flex to it because it's so long. And I worry that when I pick it up to take it to the planer, it will move enough that the shim that I've put in here to get the little bit of twist out, it um, will make that move. And then I'll be kind of fighting myself. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but I'm gonna try this see how it does in the planer to see if I need to shore up this sled somehow and make it more rigid. All 
right, I think it's safe to say that will not work. As I was feeding this thing through the planer, uh, it was bending, you know, when it was coming out of the planer, it was kind of arcing and bending when it was going in. And at one point it was totally separated from the sled down here where the wedge is. So there's no way to know that it was lined back up with how I already had it. So I am gonna have to do something to shore up this jig. Um, let's come up with something. And that something is a simple I-beam made out of some melamine. Now I would have normally just used the other piece of the plywood from which I cut this jig, but I had already cross cut another piece off of that for an upcoming project because I thought I was done with it. So I did not have a piece that was eight feet long anymore, but I did however have this piece of melamine sitting around that was full length. So I ripped a few strips out of that, then installed my dado stack and made sure to put the right amount of spacers in there to be exactly the width of this melamine. And I cut a couple of grooves in the strips. These grooves are gonna help me slot the wider piece into them and create an I-beam therefore creating a very strong, sturdy structure for the planer sled. For this, I didn't use any fasteners. I just used some quick setting glue, put it all in clamps and let it sit for a couple of hours. The idea of the I-beam is that it's going to stay much more rigid with those vertical pieces and not cause any of that flexing that I was having trouble with earlier. I've got the I-beam all done now and I was originally making this sled to be as wide as it could be to fit through my planer to give me the most width. I'm having to pivot a little bit and uh, because this side and this side of the I-beam also have to fit through the planer, um, I had to make it a little bit shorter and I didn't account for how much would be in the dados. So I lost about a half inch there, still not a problem, I can get over 11 inches but I need to trim this sled on the table saw so that it's a zero clearance. Then I just secured the plywood sled to the I-beam part of the sled with three screws. I thought it might be helpful later on to mark out where those screws were and also mark what is the front and the rear of the sled. So I grabbed a Sharpie and put a couple marks on there just to help me for the future. All right, it's finally time to test out this new I-beam part of the sled. I grabbed a board and pushed it up against the stop block at the back. I added another stop block toward the front, but just to show you that you don't have to have the stop block exactly where you need it, I used a couple of spacers and cut some thin wedges out of that same half inch material and just wedged it in place so it could not move front to back. This board had a slight twist in it, so I cut some really thin shims and put it under the one corner that had some flex. Now I do want to note that especially since I used melamine, this jig is quite heavy. It could easily be remedied by using one of those roller stands on the in feed and or the out feed. I'll link below to one that I found that is plenty long to accept the skis on this I-beam sled. So if you want to check that out, go give it a look, but there are a bunch of them on the market. I just wanted to note that that might make this process a little bit easier. If you needed to pick up one of those roller stands, it's still a good bit cheaper than if you had to upgrade your joiner to be able to flatten the size material that I was on this. You've got to kind of watch how you feed it through there, uh, especially as it's going in and then coming out because there's just a little bit of snipe here on the back end. That's no problem, we can take care of that. Now that this side is flat, I can take it off of the sled, flip it over, lower the planer down, and do the other side. 
and then once I get that side flat and parallel, I'll be able to come back and just clean up this snipe with really, really light passes. I wanted to show you on the flattest surface I have, this cast iron table saw, how flat this is. It's really flat. And uh, see if I can get it focused here. You can see like there's no sway at all. And there used to be a little bit of twist in this board. So I'm really happy with that. Uh, I think it did a great job. I was able to get that snipe out. No snipe in that end. And if it'll focus, no snipe down here. So I'm pretty pleased with that. That is the planer side of this sled. So now I wanna show you the table saw side of it. Now that we've got the two faces on that board complete, I'm going to convert this into its table saw form and then we will put one straight edge on it using it as a jointer sled on the table saw. It's simple to do. I've got three screws that are just holding this to the I-beam part of the sled. I'll remove those and just use the plywood part. We'll be good to go. And now it is time for the match fit clamps. Get my board here. This is the front edge. So anything I want to be cut off, I've got it set to clear just here. So I just wanna hang this over the edge just a little. Then I'll take my match fit clamps and find a couple places to clamp these things down. Let's do one there and maybe one here. All right, that's nice and tight. Still over the edge, over the edge. All right, let's rip this. The edge looks great, except you can see right there, I actually hesitated and I must have shifted. Uh, so I'm gonna try to correct that real quick. Yeah, that's more like it. I was able to do one more light pass and with a steady hand and no hesitation on the table saw, I got rid of all of those marks and got a nice crisp edge. I took a little time to make sure that this jig could last a long time and be really safe for me to use. Uh, take it first hand, I sliced myself pretty bad on the edge of this melamine because it is very sharp. So I hit it quickly with a sander and then threw on some paste wax so it could slide really well. That's really it for this one. Thanks so much for checking it out. I'm really liking the functionality of this jig where it can work in the planer as well as on the table saw to get this board that's way wider than my joiner uh, surfaced on three sides. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Be sure to check out my website where I'll have a written article with even more details on there. Go check out the shop on my website. I've got shirts there. I've got templates, plans, different stuff. Big thanks to Microjig for sending me these match fit clamps and this whole system. Uh, it really kind of inspired me to do this project and come up with something that would be functional in my shop. Hopefully you found it useful. I really think the I-beam idea was a cool one. Big thanks to my buddy Drew over at Fisher's Shop for helping me out with that. He helped me brainstorm and come up with that idea. Drew and I do a podcast together called We Built a Thing with another guy, Mark from Gunflint Designs. And we're often like hopping on the phone, collaborating with one another. If you don't already listen to that podcast, go check it out. I'll link to it below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.